first give your honor to God. I know it's warm in here. Amen. And I appreciate your patience and your prayers about our air conditioning. Amen. Amen. It might be cooler back there by the unit. I'm not sure. But up here is, what is it up to? 87. So y'all are warming it up in here. It was 85 earlier. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All that praise and worship. Amen. Knocked it up a couple more degrees. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. All this preaching that might go up a couple more degrees. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. Amen. First, give me honor to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit that is in this place. We thank God for my wife of 29 years, First Lady Amen. Harris. Amen. 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 We thank God for you and for all that you mean to us. Yes, we thank God for our deaconesses and deacon and training for all the members and guests of New Life Missionary Baptist Church. We thank God for you and ask you that you would continue to, to pray for us, amen, as we amen. seek to do God's will on this little corner of, of uh, Indian Ed Highway, amen. 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 God is blessing us to get the word out. Um, I guess I'll share this right now. I didn't want to, I wanted to get an email first, but I thought the news was so good that I, I just needed to go on and share. I got this call on Thursday. Uh, I went to work late on Thursday and got this call at home. That, so thank God. Look at how God orchestrates things. Um, the person was calling from um, a, a county a state office building, rather, here in, in Waldorf. And he was saying that they have this program available to senior citizens uh, that want to go to work. And that they will pay the senior citizen like $9.25 or $0.45 an hour to come work at our church. Amen. And people can apply for the position. They pay for the person. So isn't God good? Yeah. Isn't God, isn't that amazing yeah. that God would set up a program like that to help seniors uh, find employment? Amen. Because, you know, it's easier to find a job when you have a job. Yeah. And so they can, that's an avenue, amen, for a senior. It can be somebody from this church as well. Um, to, to work and I've got so much work for somebody to do it's just amazing yeah. Amen. <laughs> all of the ideas so I'm just praying and please pray along with me that God will bring this through and uh, we can continue to elevate um, this this ministry amen amen there is a word from the Lord there is a word from the Lord he would not leave us wordless amen so please turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14 we're going to be reading uh, 22 through 31, and then Matthew 14, 22 to 31. I know that the New King James Version will be displayed. I, I read over the Good News translation, and I really like the way it was um, presented and translated, so I'm going to be reading from that this morning, the Good News translation. We have the New King James Version on the wall. You have various versions in your hand. You should be able to follow along. Matthew 14, 22 to 31. Amen. Amen. All God's people have access to God's word. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. Then Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the lake while he sent the people away. After sending the people away, he went up a hill by himself to pray. When the evening came, Jesus was there alone, and by this time the boat was far out in the lake, tossed about by the waves because the wind was blowing against it. Between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to the disciples walking on the water. When they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and screamed with fear. Jesus spoke to them at once. Courage, he said. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then Peter spoke up. Lord, if it is really you, 
order me to come out on the water to you. Come, answered Jesus. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he was afraid and started to sink down in the water. Save me, Lord, he cried. At once, Jesus reached out and grabbed hold of him and said, What little faith you have. Why did you doubt? They both got into the boat and the wind died down. Then the disciples in the boat worshipped Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. And please pray with us on this thought today. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Today at noon marks seven months to the day and the hour that Donald John Trump repeated the oath of office of the President of the United States. It's not an exaggeration to, to characterize these first seven months as a stormy and turbulent ride that has produced the lowest rating of any president at this point yeah. in their terms. Last week was no different when President Trump responded poorly to the outrageous displays of hatred from white supremacists and neo-Nazis who were yeah. protesting the removal of General Lee's statue. General Lee's you should know, commanded the Confederacy of Northern Virginia in the American Civil War from 1862 until it ended in 1865. Even today, Confederate battle flags fly at various places and homes. Even on I-95, just south of Petersburg, you'll yeah. see it today on your way down, there's a big Confederate flag flying over I-95. These supposed celebrations of people who seceded from the United States, who seceded from the Union, all because they refused to agree with the majority in Congress when Congress voted to not allow slavery to expand into the new territories. Yeah. You see, they were protesting against allowing slavery of enslaved people to expand yes. even further beyond where it was. In fact, South Carolina was so upset, they were the first state to secede from the Union and to separate itself all the way back in 1860. Yeah. You see, the writing was on the wall when Abraham Lincoln was, was uh, nominated and then voted to be president yeah. that November. He had ran on a platform of stopping slavery from expanding into the territories. Yeah. The writing was on the wall. Slavery's days were coming to an end. But South Carolina, interestingly, with the 700,000 people, more than half at 400,000 were enslaved people. Yeah. Only 300,000 were free. That boggled my mind, but it explained why slaves, why enslaved people, sorry, why enslaved people, I, I don't like to call them slaves, I like to call them by the condition that they were under. They were enslaved by an oppressor. Yeah. Why enslaved people were only counted as three-fifths of a person, which was in the Constitution. Yeah. Read your Constitution. Yeah. Amen. It gives us pause to wonder, what is it that people that are fighting for these Confederate uh, symbols, what is it that they're fighting for? Yeah. Because the Confederacy stood for one thing, and that was to keep and maintain people enslaved and to expand that enslavement as far as it would go. Yeah. Now, Heather Heyer, many of you have heard her name uh, as a result of being killed down in Charlottesville uh, when this nut ran his car down into the people that were uh, peacefully protesting. 
she had family members that came to the call. I don't know if you heard what her mother said, but uh, she was very powerful uh, to be able to stand up for her daughter like this and yeah. say, my daughter's death is not going to be in vain. Yeah. Right? If you see what's going on and you're not outraged, then you need to check yourself. Yeah. Amen. She told us. Also, one of her relatives, I'm not sure if it's a sister, I don't remember, or a cousin also wrote an article uh, that talked about how her family roots were from Appalachia, how they had not experienced anything in their lives. They were people of privilege. Yeah. They didn't have a lot of money, but they were people of privilege uh, being from Appalachia, yeah. being uh, white folks in America. Amen. Automatically, you're in a position of privilege because yeah. you don't have to experience uh, knocking on someone's door and no one answering and not really being sure why. You, you, you don't have to experience walking into the store and somebody immediately walking up and trailing you um, and haven't even asked you, do you need any help or anything? They're just, just watching you simply because of the color of your skin. They didn't have to experience not getting a job, uh, waiting for months and months and months for a security clearance, uh, sight unseen. I'm talking about my wife's experience when we were in Texas sight unseen and then when they she goes in they call her and say the job is ready for you come on in let's meet you and get you started all of a sudden when they meet her all of a sudden the job is not available anymore leaving us wondering what was that all about um, too many times we're left in positions where we experience storms in our lives we experience, as people of color, we experience oppression and discrimination, amen, that uh, people that want to project the Confederacy continue seemingly to want to put on us. Some of these people believe in white supremacy and believe that even God has separated them to be superior to everyone else. Uh, it's very interesting and a very interesting mindset. And then we've got a president that seems to be ignorant of all of these facts, places everyone on equal ground and said both sides, many sides, I'm sorry, he said. He, I don't know how many sides he had in mind. Uh, there were, but anyway, that's our president. He tweets things out. He says things that don't always make sense. That's true. And we've got to deal with it. Yes. Seven months, I said. Yes. Seven months have gone by. Like the brother said, it's felt like five years already. Uh, this country is in need of prayer. God has purpose even for Donald J. Trump to be president of the United States. The storm that we're in the midst of right now, God has purpose. Whatever it is that's going on and it's the, the, the racial tension that is occurring on our jobs, I don't know about you, but I don't even want to talk to them yeah. about Charlottesville. Yeah. I, don't even want to, I don't even want to hear what they got to say because they might not say what I want to hear. <laughs> and, and somebody's going to have to say, help me hold the ghost. <laughs> Because they're on there. They're, they're in the job. Yes. They're my friends on Facebook. Yeah. They like, they, they're my friends on, tweet, on Twitter. They like the president's tweets. I, I see them, it's like, oh Lord, have mercy. Yeah. I didn't know. But I, I knew from years ago. Yeah. They're still that way. Yeah. Liking this and liking that. Uh, they might as well go in and put a Confederate flag up for their in place of their face or going and put one behind them. We, we did have a scenario at work and, and the Holy Ghost was certainly in control. There was a woman, one of our co-workers, one, someone that, that I um, uh, admire, I'll say, until one day my, my staff director, who's African American, came in and said, Mr. Harris, I got to tell you something that just happened. And, God was on my side, he said. One of our co-workers had hung a Confederate flag in her cubicle 
I'm talking about federal workspace now, had hung this Confederate flag in her cubicle. Her desk is surrounded by African Americans. Uh, she was obviously sending a message. Um, people got upset around her, pulled in my staff director because they see him as the mayor of our module and told him what was going on. He jumped immediately to action, talked to her. She doesn't work for me. She's in another organization. Talked to that chain of command and they jumped on it right away and had her take it down. But the next thing was what was troubling. She called my staff director a snitch and hung his, put a sign up. She took the flag down sure enough, but hung up another sign that said, so-and-so is a snitch, so-and-so is a snitch. And so this is a person that's like, what in the world are you doing in the workplace causing such tension and disregard? Uh, my staff director went on and told me how when she confronted him, he, she got up in his face and was actually yelling at him uh, because he had done this because he had turned her in. And I just, um, I looked at him <laughs> and I was like, is that all that happened? <laughs> and he said, thank God that I'm saved. Amen. He said, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. He said, thank God for the Holy Spirit holding me. Oh, yeah. Because five years ago, he said, it would have been on. They would have been taking me out of here and her out of here. But I thank God that God was able to hold him. That he was able to testify of the goodness of God. That he has grown and he's been telling me about his journey over, ever since I've been working with him for the past two and a half years. He's been telling me and I share scriptures with him. We pray together and he's just telling me how the Lord is dealing with him. He's a cute uh, sorry, I don't mean to point at you other than you're Greek. Uh, but he's he's Omega Sci Fi and he's trying to he's grappling with that as well, right? But he's determined to live for the Lord. He's determined to be a bold soldier on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So in the wake of all of this turbulence and the storm and the moral order, Amen, the president doesn't seem to be a place of comfort. Uh, Congress doesn't seem to be a place of comfort. Your neighbors Amen. may not be a place of comfort, but I do know a place. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Where we can so, find some comfort. Thank you. Yeah. Where we can find some deliverance. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's why sometimes it's all right to yell out, help us, Jesus. Yes, because I know no other place that we can go in yeah. stormy days like this. Yeah. Then to yell out, help us, Jesus. Yes. Jesus, when we feel ourselves sinking in that low state of hatred for others, we need to yell out, help us, Jesus. Yes. When our attention shifts because of the waves of confusion that are around us, we have to shout out, help us, Jesus. Yes. In the midst of this evil and the principalities and the powers and high places and these high offices yeah. across our country from the county level all the way up yeah. to the national level, we need to shout out, help us, Jesus. Yeah. In our text today, we see the disciples after they've experienced a full day of ministry that ended in one of the greatest miracles that are in the Bible. You can read in the verses just before that, they were out and it's the account of where Jesus was preaching all day long. Yeah. 5,000 men had gathered and they didn't bring any food. They were getting hungry at the end of the day. And the disciples said, let's send them into town to get some lunch. Jesus said, let's use what we got. Find out what we got. They found a young man that had two fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus said, that's enough. Yeah. Jesus took it and thanked God for it. And they took it took God's multiplying power and distributed it among the 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Yeah. And they ate until they were full. Hallelujah. And the God that we serve Hallelujah. is an overflow type of God. Yes, yes. They also had leftovers. Amen? Yes. Twelve baskets full. 
Following that miracle, I thought it was interesting that Matthew didn't write something that I thought should have been written, but God has his way. He didn't write that they realize, oh, after this miracle, surely you are the Son of God. They didn't, they didn't say that right then. Something else had to happen. Amen. That lets us know that God has purpose in what happens in our lives. Amen. We go through different challenges. We go through different things. God strings things together yeah. with, for purpose to bring us to an understanding of who God really is. To bring us to an understanding of who Jesus really is in our lives. So let's look at the text. So as we proceed, we also see that the preceding story was in all four Gospels. That great miracle of feeding 5,000. But as we get to our text today, Luke, for some reason, drops this particular um, text. And only Matthew, Mark, and John carry this text. This lets us know that perhaps Luke's congregation didn't need to get the exact message out of this. But that Matthew's and Mark's and John's audiences needed what was being said here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What I love about this particular passage is that Matthew is the only one that has the story about Peter stepping out of the boat yes. and has the recognition that certainly you are, Jesus, you are the Son of God. Yes. So I, that's why I like Matthew's account. Yes. Because Matthew places as he was speaking to his people and writing to his people, I can imagine that they were people like us. You see, Matthew's congregation were converted Jews. Yeah. Matthew's congregation were Jews that were serious about being Jews. Yeah. Just like we read today about Saul being converted by God. Yeah. They were serious people following the law. But one day, God touched them with the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes. And they accepted Jesus as their Savior. Yes. God yes. converted them, yes. saved them from certain death and hell and death and damnation and yes. saved them. You see, these were the people that needed to hear words like, you've heard it said to love your neighbor and to hate your enemies. Yes. But I say unto you yes. to love your enemies. Yes. You've heard it said that when, it's, when, when somebody slaps you on one cheek, that you slap them back. In other words, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, Jesus said, when somebody slaps you on one side, turn them and give them the other cheek. When somebody asks for your coat, give them your overcoat also. When somebody wants you to carry something for a mile, take it another mile as well. See, these are the types of folks that were experiencing some type of oppression. And Matthew had to address yeah. their issues. Today, even in 2017, on August 20th, I'm afraid that we as African Americans are, are experiencing some oppression today. Yeah. Yeah. We're not as free as we ought to be. We're not as free as we thought we yeah. were. Yeah. So we need to hear a message from Jesus that was given to some folks that were experiencing some of the same things yeah. that you and I experienced. In this account, we see that they concluded and declared that Jesus is the Son of God. And they worshiped Him as Lord. Yeah. Amen. When you know who Jesus is for yourself, Amen. You can ask, help me, Jesus. Yeah. When Jesus helps you, you and others, amen, can worship and praise him. You may be wondering why should you call on Jesus to help you? What has Jesus done to create this space for you to live courageously and to step out of your comfort zone? Yeah. As dynamic disciples who follow Jesus, you might be wondering, how do you do what matters in life? How do you make sure that what you do matters 
in the kingdom of God. Jesus shows us three ways in these times to get help from God. Amen. Amen. The first way in times like these to get help from God is to follow Jesus' example in verse 23. After sending the people away, he went up a hill by himself to pray. When evening came, Jesus was there alone. The first way, pray by yourself. Pray by yourself. What is your prayer life like? Do you only pray when it's time to come together for altar prayer? Do you only pray when it's somebody else is praying? Do you only pray when it's time to repeat some prayer that you've heard over and over again? Lord, lay me down to sleep. What? What? I don't even know the words. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Amen. Some things you learn and you never forget, even though you never said them. Said it in many, many years. Amen. But have you gotten beyond that? That's a good childhood prayer, but you should be beyond that. Amen. Or what is the grace? What do you say? Uh, God is grace. God is good. Let us thank you for our food. Fire here. Okay. Okay. Y'all, y'all know it. Thank you. Thank you. But I hope you're beyond that. Your prayer life should not consist of rote, memorized words. You see, because your relationship with Jesus ought to be one that you can say, Help me, Lord. I need you right now. Lord, you see what I'm going through. These folks ain't acting right today. Lord, I need you right now. Sometimes you can only say it when you get by yourself. Sometimes you can only share those big dreams when you get by yourself. You see, because even the one that you're married to, that you're walking through with life, sometimes they get scared when you share with them the big dreams that God is placing on your heart. Sometimes they look at you and say, did God really tell you that? Sometimes you just got to get alone with God. And share your big dreams with God. You can talk to God about those things that are bothering you. Those things that are holding you back from living differently for God. I'm talking about that closet that you still haven't opened up and let the Lord come into yet. I'm talking about those things that that push you aside and distract you so easily. You can talk to God about those things. I don't know what Jesus talked to the Lord about, but I know that when he that he stayed there by himself, and he stayed there until it was mighty late, reminding me that with much prayer, there's much power. With little prayer, there's little power. With no prayer, there's no power. You can talk to the Lord, and if you haven't talked to him a while. Just tell him, help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. My challenge to you in your prayer life is that you would just spend one item longer. Is that one more second than if you've just been spending five seconds with the Lord? Then make it just six seconds there. Get started there. If it's one minute, then make it two minutes. If it's one hour, then make it two hours. With much prayer, there's much power. Because even the Ku Klux Klan needs prayer. Even they need forgiveness. Even white supremacists and neo-Nazis need our love and forgiveness. Like the first lady said, former first lady, she's still my first lady, (laughs) Michelle Obama, when they go low, We go high. Amen. Take the high road. So the first way to get help from God is to pray. The second way to get help from God in times like this is in verse 27. Where it says, Jesus spoke to them at once. Said, courage. He said, it is I. Don't be afraid. The second way is get some courage. 
Amen. Get courage. This is like what God told Joshua when it was time to go into the promised yeah. land. Yeah, yeah. Be strong and courageous. Because yeah, yeah. I'm with you. God is telling you the same thing right now. Yes. Be strong and courageous. Yes. God will give you the courage that you need. Acts 1 8 says that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and give you what? Power yes. to be witnesses. My cousin posted on Facebook. He was like, What does it mean to be a witness? I'm grappling with this, with this word. I don't know what it means and I just thank God that he posted that out there because that means to me that God is dealing with him to be a witness. You see his brother who was one of them cousins that you would be like, Lord have mercy. Is the Lord ever going to do anything in this man's life? And I was so happy to read a couple weeks ago that at his church He's going to be ordained a deacon. Amen. Is it next weekend? Next weekend, next Sunday. Amen. Look at what God can do. Yes. And now his brother is posting openly. Post a lot of other things openly, but post this one openly. Uh, what does it mean to be a witness? So because of our studies, because of Brother Ellis breaking things down for us, um, because of what we learn in Sunday school, because of what we learn in Sunday school, because of what we learn in Sunday school, you want to learn something, come to what? Come to Sunday school and get some great teaching. The first thing I wrote on there was being a witness comes from the root word martyr. It means you got to die to yourself. It means you got to live for the Lord. Being a witness means setting aside your own agenda and getting on God's agenda. I just pray that the Lord will bless my cousin with those words. Yeah. And that the Lord will continue to transform his life as well. Amen. We need to get some courage. The first time, first way, pray. The second way, get some courage. The third way, to get help from God. Yes. In times like this is in verse 29. Yes. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. The third way is to go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Yes. Go to Jesus. Jesus' commands are simple to understand. When you're talking to somebody and they want to confuse things and say, well, you got to do this and you got to wear that and you yes. got to stand on one leg and you got to lift up the other arm and you got to balance yourself. No, no, no. God's ways are simple. Go. Yes. Come. Yes. One word commands. Yes. We talked about that this morning as well. Where? Sunday In Sunday school. school. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord weaves these things together in ways I don't even know before Sunday school. Amen. But while I'm sitting in Sunday school, I'm like, Lord, you know what you're doing. Because you're weaving it all together. Yes. Jesus' commands are simple. Go to Jesus. If you want to get rid of that burden that's weighing you down, go to Jesus. Yeah. We read that this morning as well yeah. in Sunday school. That's Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Amen. When you find yourself burdened down, we serve a burden carrier. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. And he invites yeah. you to come and release those burdens and lay your burdens down on him. Yeah. I don't know any shoulders that are broad enough to carry some of the stuff yeah. I have to deal with. Jesus, I want you to take it. Yeah. Go to Jesus. How many of you have seen the movie The Shack? Or read the book, amen. I love that scene in the movie The Shack. I love the way they portrayed walking on the water. The brother was in the boat and he was struggling. The wind and the waves were going against him. And all of a sudden, the character that was playing Jesus came walking out on the water to him and invited him to come out of the boat. Yeah. He stepped out of the boat, and what I love was it wasn't some little, you know, initially it's like, okay, is this going to work? Am I stepping, am I going to drop straight down, or am I stepping onto something solid? And he was kind of testing the waters, and then he gets out there, and he's standing up. And then what I love, and I, I don't know how long it took, 
But what I love about the scene is that eventually they were running across, running across the water. Amen. Nothing holding them back. Amen. Not, not, not wondering what was going to happen. The boldness, the courage, the confidence in Jesus was there, that Jesus was in control. And I can just see Peter. I don't know what happened here. I don't know what Peter was doing. But when he first stepped out, I can just see him not being somebody that just was like, I'm just going to test the waters. Now, I know Peter, he was like, Jump it out. <laughs> I'm just going to get out of this boat and I'm just going to land on the water. Because why? Because Jesus is standing right there. Yeah. Jesus told me to come. Jesus is not going to ask me to do anything that I'm not equipped to do. That he hasn't already set the conditions. That he already hasn't led the way on oh, yeah. But I didn't come to talk to you about a physical story only. You see, in the spirit realm, each one of us has experienced a spiritual storm. Yeah. When we were born, we were born into sin and into iniquity. We were born into the storm. We didn't have anywhere to run. We didn't have anywhere to turn. Yeah. But then Jesus showed up one day. Yes, and, yes. And, and we were sinking down. But Jesus worked in our hearts in such a way that we could see Jesus. Yeah. He placed in our hearts in a way that we could cry out, help us, Lord. And he reached down and pulled us up and saved us from our sins. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And even now, even in the spirit realm, all the pieces of the pies, whether it's physical, whether it's intellectual, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, yes. Jesus is concerned about all of them. And when you're experiencing storms in your life, yeah. I tell you, just cry out, help me, Jesus. Yeah. Help us, Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we need you right now. Yeah. And who wouldn't serve a God like that? You, you can do it, church. You can do it. Whatever it is that Jesus is calling you to do, you can do it today. You can step out of your comfort zone and go in and listen to what, the God, what God is calling you to do. He's already saved you from hell. And now he's got work for you to do. He's got you on the battlefield for a reason. He's got you involved in spiritual warfare for a reason. I tell you, if you just rely on Jesus and follow these three ways. Why? Because Jesus followed them himself. You already saw where Jesus prayed. That wasn't the only time that Jesus prayed. When he was experiencing his own storm in his life. And he was about to be uh, turned in by the traitor. He was down in the garden of Gethsemane and praying, Lord, if it's in your will, please take this cup away from me. It's getting bitter right now. Yeah. But Lord, if it's your will, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, Lord. Yeah. Jesus prayed. Jesus got some courage that day. Yes. He said, Lord, whatever it is I got to go through, yes. not my will, but your will, Lord. Just give me the strength to carry on. Yes. Jesus went to God even when he was hanging on the cross. Even at the darkest hour when our sins were being laid on him. Yeah, yeah. In his darkest hour and he cried out, my God, my God. Yes. Why have you forsaken me? I've been with you all this time. Yes. I've never known separation from you like yes, this. Yes. Why have you turned your back on me? But he still didn't give up on God. Amen. He still didn't do what some of us like to do. Yeah. When the time gets going rough, we yeah. think God has walked away from us. Yeah. And some people tend to say, forget God. Yeah. But Jesus, even in his darkest hour, yes. said, my God, my God, yes. where are you at? Help me right now. Yes. Because Jesus went through all of that. Because the disciples went through all of that. Amen. It ended on a high note. Yeah. On verse 32, when Jesus and Peter got back into the boat, the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, they worshiped Jesus. Yes. And they cried out saying, truly, if I didn't know it before, now I know it. Yes. You are the son of God. Yes. After all of these things that I've seen you do, people getting healed, yes. people getting fed, people being lifted up. I've experienced it for myself. I was in the storm, 
on myself. I was in the storm myself. Yeah. And you came to see about me. Yeah. I know for myself yes. that you are yes. the son of God. Yes. God will bring you to that point in your life. Yes. Amen. We're like we just sang earlier. Yes, God is real. Yes, yes God is real. Yes. How do you know he's real? Because I've been through some storms. Yes. And he's never let me down. Yes. I've been through some storms in life. And every time I call out, help me, Jesus. Yeah. He's right there. Let's go on and play that Jesus in the house. Amen. Jesus yeah. is in this house. Yeah. And he's worthy of all praise and all glory. Yeah. You, you, you need to know that Jesus can make a difference in your life. Amen. And I love this song.